So never discount where you've come from. There's good, there's bad, there's ugly. Here's the thing. The enemy wants to keep the past as a part of our present. God wants to keep the bad things from our past to have a grip on our present and to keep us from moving into our future. So there has to come this point in time, and I think that for believers, there are several points in time when we are liberated from the effect of our past, from the effect of our family's past, from the effect of any kind of bondage that the enemy would have put us in. And for, for all of us, even if you were saved at three, um, like our oldest daughter was, that means the day that you were born again, the day that Jesus becomes your savior. But how many of you have also recognized that you've had many different points of liberation, of deliverance, of freedom, uh, points in time, pivot points in time, if you will. Uh, we talk about, and, I, and as I was praying this, this afternoon, the Lord said that this really, Passover really is an indicator of a pivot point in history um, where everything shifted for the Jews. They went to, they went to bed s- slaves the, the day before. They had Passover. They woke up the next day free. Now, how many still know they still had Pharaoh on their trail? They still had to, they had still had to face their Red Sea. They still had to go through all the stuff that they went through. And, and ultimately, an entire generation died out because they refused to believe the promises of God. So, so Passover became a pivot point for the Jewish people. It's also a pivot point for us. And it is a point that we look to when everything changed. Okay? And I want to say that as believers, if we struggle with things... And, you know, sometimes you feel like, well, I've been, I've been saved 30 years. I shouldn't still be struggling. Let me just say this. Do not let the enemy trap you in that nonsense and keep you from getting free. Because I, I, I'm still getting free. My husband's so excited I'm still getting free, okay? I'm still getting free of stuff, okay? I'm still getting delivered of stuff. I'm, I'm still being liberated in Christ. And I've been a believer now for 45 years. And so what we have to understand is that liberation is the message of Passover, but it's also the message for every believer today, is that whether you struggle with things in your, in your mind, whether you think, struggle with things in your body, whether you struggle perhaps with things that the enemy comes in and tries to bring a curse on you for some reason or another, I'm writing a book on, called Divine Recovery, and I talk about how there's generational curses, there's territorial curses, and then there's what I call self-participating curses. <laughs> you know what a self-participating curse is? <laughs> it's when we participate. <laughs> it's like you can stand there all day long and go, I bind the devil, and really what you should be doing is saying, I bind myself, okay? Because we have all these wrong belief systems that are keeping us in bondage. And so that's where the Lord comes in and he says, listen, there, it's still, I mean, you can cast the devil out. This is the, this is, this is the queen of deliverance right here. But guess what? You can't cast out the flesh. That's why Passover talks about get the leaven out of your house. Get the leaven out. You know what the leaven is? Leaven is basically yeast. I think the definition goes something like it's a small amount of, of active ingredient then when put in the hole causes everything else to rise so in other words it affects the whole so don't think that you can have a little bit of sin in your life and just compartmentalize it over here and not think that it's going to affect everything that you do okay self-participating that's what Passover says get all the leaven out of your house now Beth was raised Jewish true did you guys like do the leaven search or did you guys do traditional Passover? Do you mind if I? Yeah. When, when I was kind of young, probably before the teen years, we, we did it every year. Okay. So, I mean, it's part of the Hebraic tradition to go and search out anything that's leavened. I just want y'all to know, we're pretty sure this is unleavened bread. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're, we're, we're definitely sure there's no leaven in it, but we really aren't sure what it is. For that reason, we call it manna. Because manna actually means what is it, okay? So we don't really know what it is. So that, so that is the process of Passover. Just search out the leaven, get the leaven out of your house, and get prepared, okay? So the first thing is liberation. Don't leave this place tonight 
not free of something you know that you need to get free of. Amen. Number two is revelation because everything in this speaks about Christ. The lamb that they, that they killed, they slaughtered, they ate it, they put the blood on the doorpost. All of that was pointing towards a future day when Jesus would hang on a cross. And I saw this really interesting thing that talked about how you put the blood on the, the, the doorpost, which went down like this, and then you put it on the lintel, which is on the top, and how it was, those were the places where Jesus bled. Jesus bled from the crown of thorns on his head, and Jesus bled from his hands that dripped down and made pools of blood even on the floor where his feet were. Everything about it, the lamb had to be perfect. It had to be spotless. It was revelational about what we are living in and walking in today. But it was also not just about liberation, it was about the, the revelation that there's a promised land that God wanted to bring them into. Now, we know, because we know the story, that ultimately that generation failed to cross into the promised land. But I, as I was reading this and studying it a few weeks ago, here's what the Lord really showed me. Because remember the whole story, they came to the, to the boundaries of the promised land. And it was God himself that actually said, send in 12 spies. I want you to see this land. Because it was a land that flowed with milk and honey. This was, this was a phrase that basically said, this is the most amazing, spectacular, abundant, lush, am most amazing piece of land on earth doesn't look that way today if you've been to Israel, okay? Uh, but that's what, how it was described. And they stood there, and they sent in the 12 spies, and we know the story. Ten came back and said, yes, there's, there are, there are, there's everything that God said, but there's giants in the land. And Joshua and Caleb said, yes, there's giants in the land, but we've got to go in right now and possess it. See, I, when I was reading this, I was like, you know, God, but what about the giants, you know? And here's what I felt like the Lord showed me. He said, the giants were there to be the caretakers of the blessings that were going to come for God's people. But when it came time that their time was up, God was, God was saying to, to the children of Israel, I want you to cross in because, listen, you just saw me do 10 plagues. You just saw me open up a sea and let you cross over on dry ground, and then that same sea swallow up all of your enemies and kill every single last one of them. Those things that are pursuing you today, you'll never see again tomorrow. You would think these people were primed and ready, like, show me a giant, let me take him on. Because, see, I think the giants were there. God had prepared the giants so that when the children of Israel went in, them partnered with God was going to overthrow those giants, was going to slay those giants, and God was going to instantly transform them from having a slave mentality into having a giant killer mentality. Come on, don't you think that the, do you think God took them to the side of that promised land and said, now y'all go kill these giants all by yourself? So why do we think when we face a giant, God's saying, go, go conquer this by yourself? No, Joshua and Caleb got it. They said, we eat giants for our bread. These giants were created. They are provision for us. They are the goodness of God. See, those giants were just there so that God could set them up to conquer. Yeah. 